I just saw the movie Lady Bird uh, about a young girl growing up in Sacramento and uh, with a uh, middle class family she feels like they're, they're poor they're mixed and in her family she has um, two Latinos looks like Madonna two Latinos that they adopted no that's not Madonna anyways um, so they take these two Latinos in the family she's white herself and her mom and dad are white they're all going to the uh, and she's going to the Catholic school I'm not sure not not necessarily because they're devout Catholic as much as they just think it's a better school so uh, it's partially some parts of it are, are reverent other parts are irreverent sometimes they make fun of the Catholic Church um, you know for better or for worse so uh, I I uh, I'm a Christian, as you know, I do movie reviews for Christians, and I also, I try to respect all the Christian branches, Protestant, Catholic, Orthodox, and yes, we can be critical of various aspects of our Christian faith to a certain extent, but at, 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 a certain, at, at some point it becomes irreverent and disrespectful. Yeah, I'm not sure they crossed that line because, spoiler alert, if you want to know what's going to happen, I'm going to talk about it here. Because they, uh, at the end, after some difficult experiences, she ends up in New York. She's growing up in Sacramento, as I mentioned, but she's in, and she's in high school and trying to get into a college and she manages, against all odds, because she's not a great student, to get into a New York uh, school. And she goes off to the university there. And then after a bad experience at the very end of the movie, she kind of wanders back into a Catholic church and seems to be uh, comforted by it. So in that regard, it's sort of like they're questioning The Catholic, they're showing her questioning her Catholic faith like kids do and should do, really. I mean, you have to kind of say, is this really what's right for me? Is this, does this make sense? You know, they're questioning. And so that's okay, as long as it doesn't end at that. And it didn't. It actually came back to kind of restore faith in the church, not just Catholic church. I don't even know if it was a Catholic church at the end. Maybe it was but in church in general. And of course, the church has its problems, but don't always, don't throw the, the baby out with the bathwater, as they say. Church is the body of Christ, so it's not just your neighborhood church where you go and maybe you have problems, maybe you got a bad pastor or priest or whatever. Fortunately, they didn't dwell on that for so long. They didn't. They just they, that was part of it. But there are other parts of her growing up experience. They're learning about um, sex, I guess. She's trying to find her identity as a adolescent with sexuality, sexual, you know, thoughts. And her first boyfriend, it turns out, is she's dating him for a while, and then she finds out he's not not who she, not who uh, she thought he was. She has to uh, come to some sort of uh, equilibrium about that. Which then she finds a new boyfriend. 
then that was not so great either. So she was just uh, dating and learning and growing. And then uh, after losing her best friend, she returns to her best friend. Ordinary kids. I mean, uh, she returns to her kind of uh, nothing special first best friend. And I guess her best friend ever. Nothing special in the in the eyes of the world, that is. Not rich, not exceptionally pretty, things like that. And the mom really plays a good part in this movie as well. The mom is like your, kind of your hard-working, caring mother who does everything she can for her one daughter and also her two adopted kids I don't know if they're adopted or just taken in they're just given a place to stay but I don't know her name the actor's name I didn't recognize any of the I, I, I think I did recognize that one from, from something but the mother I think I've seen her before something. I can't remember. Anyways, uh, what do we say about it for the Christian for the Christian faith, the Christian believers? What do we pray about? For mother-daughter relations, my mom and my sister came to mind during the movie and how hard it is for, for these relationships sometimes sad sometimes, but happy at times, you know, a lot of different mixed emotions. Sometimes the daughter thinks she hates her mom, but then she realizes, no, that's not true. Sometimes the mom will be happy when the daughter gets out of there, and the, or the or it could be a son and the, and the mom too, but in this case it's the daughter and the mom, and the, or the dad. There's a dad in the family, he's kind of a melancholy, nice, nice old man. And uh, so it goes. So, you know, we pray for family relations, trying to stay together when times are tough. Pray for people to believe in Christ and God, to continue to. Even during tough times and things don't seem to make sense, not to reject God, but hang on to God, even though you know you can't make sense of everything. That's that's a good thing to pray for, is just to hang on, even in times where everything seems difficult and even meaningless sometimes. Existential, especially when you're an adolescent growing up. For those of you who are in high school. You hear all the emphasis on getting to college, and then you hear even the older people mocking millennials. I don't like that when they do that, because some of the older people didn't even have to take a uh, standardized test to get into college. They got in because they're white and male. In some cases, white and female, but mostly white and male. And then later on, the standardized test started being put into place. So. Don't listen to the older people who will think uh, that their generation is the greatest generation. Hang in there. Stand strong. Be proud of what you are. I emphasize traditional values. You know, there's a little, there's a part in this film where it's that come becomes an issue. That's, you know, I think uh, we should stand with these traditional values. And I didn't like the abortion scene either. Uh, the, the girl. The main character, the young girl growing up, questioned why abortion was wrong. She made a crude comment. And so I just didn't like that part. It was, uh, and then she got suspended because of it. Hey, hope I don't get.
so we uh, remember to pray for unborn babies. I stand strong and pro-life. That was a disrespectful part of the film. That was a that was a Hollywood moment where they were being mostly respectful to, to the Catholic Church, they're questioning it a little bit, but not showing it in a really bad light. But the abortion part was. I, th I think they should have cut that out. So we pray for unborn babies, respect pro-life, respect adoption. Decent movie. I mean, I was not. It didn't, you know, take me away. Kind of reminded me a little bit of that one that just came out a little while ago. With uh, what's the name of that again? Guy whose son is trying to get into Harvard or Yale. He's they're both they're they're a middle class family from Sacramento also. In the movie, in this movie, at one point the girl calls Sacramento the Midwest of California. <laughs> I grew up in the Midwest. I respect Midwest, but Californians in general mock the Midwest. That's called. That's what they call flyover country. Sad. Anyways. I'll leave it at that for now. Just pray for families. Stand strong in the faith. Pray for unborn babies. Keep growing in Christ. Hear our prayer, Lord, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.